Welcome to Rice or Rescue. My name is Huntington, my partner's name is Darian, and today we're going to be working on Gabriel's red RX-8. The gentleman says that he's blowing smoke out the back real hard and he's losing a lot of oil. He also says that his air conditioning isn't working and that's crap because Houston gets way too hot for no air conditioning. And he also mentioned that his car is pulling a little bit to the right, but when he went to get it aligned, the technician pointed out that he had a seized up tie rod, so we're going to go ahead and repair that too. I also wanted to take a moment and thank all of our subscribers and viewers, and particularly those who have allowed us to work on their vehicles, because they made the vehicle lift possible, and things were a lot easier with this. This thing still works, right? It's not going to kill us? Yeah, it works great. Dude, this is exciting. So are we just going to like push it in, or does it start? No, it still runs great. Uh we did this engine swap, so let's see how it starts. It's probably been like, what, four or 5,000 miles since we did this? Just about. Yeah. Like the many other RX-8 engine swaps that we've done for people in the Houston area, we got this engine from JDMPlace.com. And it's camera. a great source. I would definitely Blow recommend the checking them out if you're looking to do an engine swap because they have a huge inventory. Now, just because we installed this engine doesn't mean it's automatically our fault that the front main seal went bad because it's impossible to tell how the previous owner took care of the vehicle and it's impossible to know exactly how many miles this engine had on it before we purchased it because it's from Japan. It also sat on a boat overseas for a couple of months and it sat in JDM Place's inventory for a few months. So we're gonna do what we can, but it's not fair to say it's automatically our fault. So we've got to take the air box out right here, and a 42 out battery and its tray out. Once those items are removed, you also have to remove the drive belt and the accessory belt so that you have the ability to remove the crank pulley. Now you also have to remove the starter so that you can jam a pry bar into the flywheel which gives you the ability to remove the crank pulley. You have to do that so that you have access to the front main seal. Looks like we got uh, some uh, leakage going on here, you know? You know, brother? It's a little wet. I mean, we got some leakage. It's a little wet. So we're pulling the starter off now, now that we have our coffee. This isn't a suggestion. It's more like a freaking order. If you're going to disconnect your starter, disconnect your battery. Disconnect your battery so you don't electrocute yourself. If you're going to disconnect your starter, disconnect your battery first. While we're on the subject of warnings, it really needs to be said that replacing your front main seal on an RX-8 is definitely not a job for amateurs. And despite that we're wearing t-shirts and we look like just normal kids doing this stuff, we know what we're doing. We do this professionally. If you decide to replace your front main seal and you do not keep your engine under load the whole time, you are going to put yourself in a position where you have no alternative but to rebuild your whole engine. So don't try it unless you really know what you're doing. Stick a pry bar in the flywheel, hold the flywheel still. While someone breaks this here, big ass bolt loose. It's uh, 12 o'clock, sharp. You're gonna need a lot of leverage to break loose that front pulley. So if, you're if your ratchet itself doesn't do the job, stick your jack handle on the ratchet and that'll give you extra leverage. Hope it doesn't break. Hope you don't have a okay, cheap ratchet. So it's loose now. That was a pain in the ass. That's 216 foot pounds. How'd that feel, Huntington? Honestly, uh, the 216 foot pounds part is not the hardest and sketchiest part of it. The sketchiest part is if we did this on jack stands, like the amount of force that we're applying in two different directions could cause the foot one of the jack stands to come loose and the bitch to come down on you. So it's just another reason why you really should not do this one unless you've got equipment like this. So be careful. Is the clutch pedal still on the floor? This is what we mean when we say keeping the engine under load. Just take a stick shove your clutch pedal all the way down and use some vice grips against the seat to keep it engaged there. That will keep the engine under load and it makes sure that your engine doesn't fall apart when you take out your main seal. That's it right there. Let's 
kind of destroyed for me trying to get it out, but. This is the seal. It was super brittle. I mean. Master Pro. Pro. And this Delphi tie rod is. Uh, I have a The most important thing in the smallest box. Wow, that's a big difference. So like, you see how this is like super, super rubbery? Yeah. Yeah. The outside is still super firm like it should be, but the inside is real, real rubbery. There is a special tool that you're supposed to use to install the front and main seal, but we don't have it because it's rice or rescue, right? So we're gonna go ahead and very delicately tap it in with a small hammer. Now you have to be very careful if you're gonna try to do this because you could easily destroy it if you don't know what you're doing. Now that the main seal has been taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and address the air conditioning. Gabriel said it wasn't working. We took a look at it. And we immediately saw that his idler pulley was completely obliterated. This is the old pulley. <laughs> Let's compare and contrast. <laughs> it appears that there is a spacer missing between the pulley and the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and take a walk into Darian's personal junkyard and strip one of those spacers off of the multiple 13Bs that he has laying around. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, this guy right here is what we were missing. Goes like so. So with the spacer put on there, everything lines up just fine. The belts work, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten it all down. Now, what I wanna do is get all this back together, get it fired up, and then after that we'll get onto the tie rod end. So your passenger side? Okay. All right, sounds good. I just wanted to make sure before we changed the wrong one and it didn't need to be changed. Ready, set, send. Battery back on yet, or connect the battery back up yet because we still need to put the starter on. Battery's hooked up while we try to put the starter on and one of our wrenches touches ground, we're done. So. I'm hooking up the starter now, the electrical connectors. And then uh, we're gonna hook up the battery and give it a start and make sure that we didn't drop that Torrington bearing. Which I'm pretty sure we didn't because we didn't hear a thud or anything dumb like that. Hey, who are you? Get that, get that. He was complaining about his AC not working well. It obviously wasn't working because the belt wasn't on. So I was trying to see if the AC compressor would kick on and off after we turn it on. And the air feels like it's cool in there, but I haven't heard the compressor kick off and cycle yet. So we'll see what happens. And the compressor is definitely on and the air is definitely cool. So it's all good. Nope. He probably needs to have it drained and recharged. And it is uh, 135. This is the seized inner tie rod end. So the guy said that this inner tie rod end was seized. Um, as you can see here, he marked it all up. So this is where Rice to Rescue really becomes Rice to Rescue. We already tried the PB Blast to break it loose. We tried using a little bit of heat, but we have a rubber boot there, so we can't take the torch to it or anything silly like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grind two big slots on both sides of the tie rod, right? Then we're gonna see if we can stick a wrench on there and rotate it by hand. If all goes south, it's no big deal because you already saw our personal junkyard. We have a bunch of tie rods laying around, so we can waste this thing and it won't be a problem. But I want to let you know that I hear you OSHA supporters, I hear you complainers, and I just want to say, should you do this at home? Absolutely not! Absolutely not! Take this to a professional and have them replace it properly. So after grinding both sides down evenly so that we could put a wrench on, we found that all of the wrenches kept slipping because it was just that tight. It was bending the wrenches. So what we did is we clamped some vice grips on there really tight and then we stuck a giant pole at the end put the crescent wrenches on the nut on the tie rod we spun them against each other 
And it worked! This is my ass. We are Rice to Rescue, and we rescue your ricers. Your old one is fine. Yeah, they have it as a backup, or you can return it, get some money back on it, but uh, we, we broke the one that's on there free, so there's no reason to change. And that concludes today's episode of Rice or Rescue. Yeah, we ground into those tie rods just a little bit, but you bet your ass we wouldn't send these back to Gabriel if we didn't fully believe that they were going to get the job done. He's our friend, and he's our client. We take care of him. And now he can send them back, the new ones, and get some money back if he wants to. All that's left to do at this point is to test drive the thing. Do a couple donuts, couple burnouts, make sure it still gets to 120 miles per hour, but of course we can't do any of that on film, not to suggest that we actually would do it anyway, of course that is illegal, and we do not support that kind of behavior, we like it, but we don't support it, so don't do it, alright, don't break the law. So for some official closing statements, I want to thank you for viewing our video on YouTube or maybe on Facebook, but definitely check out our Facebook group, Rice or Rescue. We post all kinds of silly updates and other random things that you won't find on our YouTube page. You can also follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter and Snapchat too, because just like every other freaking YouTube channel out there, we're trying to get some subscribers and some followers. We really want you to be one. So please, again, press that red button, subscribe and follow us on YouTube. We'll see you next time. And again, don't break the law, okay? Don't be that dumb guy who's doing the burnouts out of the car meets and ruining it for everybody. Don't be that guy. So thanks again, call your mother, and have a great day.